specter of online privacy is now in President Trump's hands. The House of Representatives and the Senate have voted to repeal Internet privacy protections that were approved in the final days of the Obama administration. The move effectively hands over your personal information to the highest bidder. Oh, hello, Team Internet. You've been sold out to the highest bidder by the Senate and Congress. Your only hope? That Trump decides you, an American citizen, are worth more than the prospect that he and his cronies might gain ISP lobby money and doesn't sign the bill. Oh, but he will. If you think you have a right to keep your private stuff private, like what websites you're visiting, what kinds of videos you're watching, what kind of weird underwear you like to buy, what your passwords are, where you're geolocated, the things you just Google, financial and health information, everything on your phone browser, emails, social security numbers, you are wrong! Or thinking about the faraway golden era of last year. In 2016, Obama appointed FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler put into place consumer protections to stop the likes of AT&T, Verizon, and Charter from taking and using people's personal and sensitive information without their opt-in consent. And the companies were also expected to keep data safe from breaches. But apparently that's unreasonable. Those rules are never going to be enacted, and now Congress has not only voted down privacy, that bill also included an assurance that the FCC cannot revive those privacy protections ever. The FCC chairman under Trump has made it clear he wants to destroy net neutrality. Republican senators and representatives have made it clear through recent votes that they don't care about privacy protection or internet service customers, which <laughs> is super weird considering the vast majority of Americans across all parties very strongly support their privacy being maintained. What could be the problem here? Why wouldn't legislators elected to represent us vote for our interests? Why would they do this thing that no one ever asked for? <laughs> all right. Check out this chart from Vocative. It shows all the different anti-privacy senators on the left and all the many companies like Time Warner, Verizon, Comcast, and the like, and the money they paid out since 2012 for the cause of anti-privacy. Some of you were sold out for as little as $11,000 of lobby money. That's right, if you live in Alaska, represented by Senator Dan Sullivan, your privacy is worth less to him than this used 2008 Toyota minivan. Followthemoney.org shows Representative John Kennedy of Louisiana sold his constituents internet privacy out for just a thousand dollars of donor money. Louisiana, you just got sold out for chump change. In all, these 50 Republican senators and these 215 Republican representatives sold you out. You might think this doesn't matter, that you have nothing to hide anyway, or that you can just stop using a certain ISP, but can you? Sites like Google and Facebook don't see everything you look at on the internet, just the stuff you feed them. And there are things you can choose to opt out of, and are not pay sites, by the way. Census data says 78% of Americans don't have a choice of ISPs. They're stuck with what's available to them. And if they get screwed, they get screwed. And they come back for more every month. And they pay for it. You can't easily cut the internet out of your life now. The sites you visit can reveal your sexual preference, your private medical issues, how much money you make, how much money you owe, where you live and travel every day, and just the weird messed up questions you wanted to look up. Persistent internet data collection is invasive to say the least. It's like paying to be stalked by an aggressive salesman who also knows all your secrets. Privacy isn't a luxury you should have to pay for. What kind of utility monetizes customers' personal information? It would be like if we were all just okay with the water and sewer company analyzing our poop and then selling that data to General Mills. Gross? Well, this wholesale commodification of citizen privacy is gross. Also gross, despite internet privacy and net neutrality being issues important to all citizens, the vote strictly followed party lines. All the anti-privacy voters were Republican, none were Democrats, and only 15 reps actually crossed party lines to oppose this. Elected officials chose to represent deep ISP pocketbooks and fear of their own party. Is it so much for people to expect our representatives to represent us? I'm Kim Horcher. I wrote this. I do have a slight cold. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter.